the introduction. Hi, my name is Tina. Yes, I'm also uh, from Imperial College. I'd like to talk to you today about some work we've done recently on investigating uh, the cutting resistance in stretch polymer films. This is work that started initially uh, at the University of Sydney, and then Gordon's the link uh, between the two campuses. So actually, similar to Gordon, um, we're in the space of uh, alternative methods of fracture for fracture toughness testing. So traditionally, let's say you've got a polymer, you want to know the fracture toughness. The, tr the traditional ways would be through G or K testing. Um, however, that can have its limitations, which I'm sure many, many of you are familiar with. So let's say you've got a high, tough, high toughness material, maybe material with very low modulus, very low yield stress, maybe the material is quite hard to shape. Also, you get problems can get problems of cracked blunting as well as um, a stable crack growth before the, before the fracture. So to overcome these things, there are some other methods. There's James Wood testing, for example, which came from methods, has established standards as well for metals and polymers. Uh, we just heard about cutting uh, on, on machining. So, so why cut, uh, so why, uh, cut and tear uh, polymers? So, I mean, you can't put it in the three-point bent test, so we, we're looking for an alternative method. But also, my, my research, my background is in a fracture from bunk cracks. So this is LEFM where um, we don't have a... LEFM where, where LEFM breaks down, we don't have a sharp crack. So that could be a, a notch, or that could be a crack that becomes a blunt. So we chose to look at uh, polymer films because you can get this crack tip blunting, but also um, we need an alternative method for testing the toughness. So we got um, some inspiration from some work done in the 70s um, by two people late in the year. So this, this here is a, uh, an apparatus they built back in the 70s. So this uses pulleys, weights, uh, a razor blade on the end of a stiff spring, and you know the stiffness of the spring, so they can work out the forces in cutting uh, various rubber sheets. They were interested in what happens to tires when they get, um, when they get cracked or when they, or when they tear. Um, so we, uh, so, so this is um, from from their paper as well. So this is this is a uh, pure shear specimen. So they took a razor blade, they cut uh, from the top coming down, as well as applying different loads laterally. And these are some interesting results that they they found. So on the left here, this is for cases of very low uh, lateral tension. So if you, if you, I'll get into the analysis later, but F and T are effectively F is the energy contribution from the blade. T is the energy contribution from the lateral tension, or the lateral force. And so if you add up, in this region here, if you add up F and T, it's constant. And this is just an enlarged version of that. However, there seems to be a critical point after which, if you add up F and T, it's much greater. So maybe it's not a factor of control, maybe something else is going on. So we, so we use that as inspiration. We, instead of using pulleys and weights, we took a stick uh, we, with a load cell. And so we we took the two the two limitations of the two the two extremes. So we took the case of just having a force coming down, and then the case of no cutting force and just a lateral tension. We did this for a variety of uh, scotch back films like, like Idris. Um, one was a polyester film. The other three were laminates, so copolymers, uh, with thicknesses varying between 15 micron and 70. And then we also introduced uh, an initial crack in there as well. So here's an example of a, of a cutting test we did. So this is no lateral tension, just cutting coming down from the top. Um, as the blade comes down, you get an initial transient peak over here, which is quite high. But then eventually, you do settle into a, uh, a steady state region. And so we just took the average of that steady state re region to find a, like an average force in that, in that region. Uh, it was on this quality static. Loading, so we did it pretty slowly and then, or well, did it quite quickly, then we reduced the speed until there was no real difference. Uh, it's not very, it wasn't too time dependent anyway. And then this is the case for, uh, for just lateral tension, so you can see here. So initially we had a sharp crack, uh, this shows a notch here, but we had a, a sharp crack initially. And so when you load it in tension, um, that will blunt to various uh, degrees depending on the material that you have. So with rubber, they found that it will blunt a lot because of the low modulus. And so as you, as you load it, this is a force time, um, you reach a, a maximum force around which region the material will actually fracture. So I've got a video 
of the tearing piece. So you can see here, it might be a bit hard to see it's transparent, but here's the crack tip. Uh, we're loading it uh, laterally, and then you can see the crack start to propagate uh, through the material. Uh, so this is actually, if I go back, so we actually turn this just sideways, because it's easy to do in the stick that way. Okay, so now we've measured, we've done these cutting tests, we've done these uh, tearing tests, how can we actually work out the fractal toughness of the material? So this analysis is also in the late year paper, so we're saying that the, the energy required to fracture the material comes from two contributions, one from the, the blade coming down, and then one from the, the lateral force on the material, and we're on the pure shear as well, so this is the analysis for, for pure shear. Uh, you can get the energy contribution uh, from the blade, by just dividing through by the thickness. And then for the lateral force, you've got to consider the strain energy density along the ligament length. And, and then uh, from that, you can arrive at the, uh, the energy contribution for tearing as well. So we did this for four materials, as I mentioned before. Um, one was 15 micron thickness. That was the um, that was the, just the polymer film. The other three laminates were slightly thicker. Um, this is a typical stress strain curve that we got uh, from uh, from doing a stress, uh, stress strain test. And so you see it's, it's pretty linear here. And then we do reach uh, uh, with the plastic part. Okay, so these are the results from cutting. So you notice similar features. You get a transient peak for each of them. Then we reach quite consistently a steady state region um, for, each of the, uh, for each of the four materials. It's actually quite hard to get because you need a pretty good machine with a good load cell with a, decent, with a good enough resolution to be able to um, to be able to get a, a reasonably steady state region. Sometimes they'll fall off. Or also, you have to constrain the material quite well and make sure it doesn't move about, otherwise uh, that force will vary. These are results from tearing. So similar features, it starts off non-linear, then we get to a, 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 a constant force, and uh, at which time the, the sample will fail at, at the crack tip, which is wanted. So here's a summary of some of the results we got. So we, we expected, um, so the reason we kind of did the test was, okay, so they've done this for rubber, how about some polymers, and let's see what we can maybe work out uh, as a result of the fracture process. So we, so for the four, well, for the three laminates, which were, I guess, relatively thicker, um, these are more, so this is about, so rubber has a modulus of around 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Um, so we're talking about 10, 100 times more stiff. Um, we found that from obtaining the G from just pure cutting, from only cutting and from only tearing, we, we found similar results for the laminates. However, we found that for this uh, less constrained uh, polymer film, which is PT, uh, we found it, it varied quite considerably. So this is a bit more what they saw the rubber tests. Um, so I've spoken a little bit about the, confu the confusion already, but when we started off, uh, kind of the purpose of doing this testing was, okay, what's the effect of the quantity? What's the effect of uh, we're going to have an alternative method for fracture toughness? And so, I guess similar to with the rubber, we found that this one, and if you, if you look at it as you do the test, this one will blunt significantly at the crack tip, so maybe it's controlled by something else. Um, but in terms of just like with, with rubber, you, you'll measure a much larger apparent fracture toughness. However, we found it worked quite well for, for these laminates, so potentially it's a method we can use for the laminates. Uh, I think this is a part one. Part two is we like to investigate rate effects, also do experiments with the same material if we can source it, but for alternating thicknesses to investigate the, how they how they constrain and those effects, as well as do some modeling. Um, so I've done a bit of modeling in the past, modeling the rubber case, but we would like to extend it to uh, the pollen film. So I think if you came to my talk yesterday, you might have seen that as well. Uh, thanks, Mr.